George. Hello, Steve. You know, I've always thought it was impolite to leave without saying goodbye to your host. What? Well, isn't it? <laughs> well, yeah, I suppose so. But maybe she didn't like the color of your eyes. It isn't a she, Steve. I'm referring to a European diplomat by the name of Gelba. Gelba? As you know, Gelba was here to engage in some top secret conversations. Four days ago, just as the talks were nearing completion, Gelba suddenly disappeared. You think somebody made him disappear, or maybe it was his own idea, huh? I don't know what to think. Steve, Gelba had in his possession his own records of the talks. Oh, red-hot stuff, huh? Doesn't come hotter. It's information that certain interests would be very glad to get their hands on. Well, if Gelba disappeared four days ago, I should think his trail would be pretty cold by now. One day cold. Last night, Gelba's daughter was seen in Barcelona, Spain. She's believed to be traveling with Gelba. Barcelona? Who saw her? Uh, some sort of musician by the name of Xavier. He works at one of the cafes there, Pepito's. Any other contacts? It's on the paper here. A man by the name of Majak. He's a representative from Gelba's country. He's flying to Barcelona. He'll meet you at the Hotel Granada. Now, this Majak can be a lot of help to you. He's terribly patriotic, but a real hothead. So don't let his temper ruin your mission. I'll keep him simmered down. Get over there, Steve. Work with Majak. Find where Gelba's daughter is, and through her, Gelba. And above all, get those records back. Well, that's it. You've got your assignment. Good luck. Sure, I've got my assignment. Fly to Spain and try to find a missing European diplomat named Gelba. One man in a city as large as Barcelona. A real needle in a haystack. Of course, there's a strong possibility that our boy Gelba doesn't want to be found, which gives me an uneasy feeling that the guy who may wind up getting the needle is myself. It's Tuesday when I arrive in Barcelona. I take a look at the size of the place, and I realize all over again what a job I've got on my hands. There are a million places a guy could hide in a town this size. Through the legation, I learn where Majak lives, the Hotel Granada, and the number of his room. Just a minute. Who is it? Steve Mitchell from the United States. What's the deal? You are Steve Mitchell? I just told you so. Prove it. No, no, careful. Hand them in to me, please. Turn around. Let me see your face again. Very well. Come in, Mr. Mitchell. Jack? Yes. Would you mind telling me what this routine is all about? Well, I am very sorry, Mr. Mitchell. But my present situation demands the utmost caution. What is your present situation? Uh, there have been two attempts on my life in the last three days. For all I knew, this might have been the third. Who's trying to kill you? In each case, I did not have a close look at the would-be killer. But I know there are interests that wish to prevent me from finding Gelba. I see. However, their efforts are doomed to failure. But I will find Gelba. Oh, you got some leads here in Barcelona? I have only just arrived. But I do know that Gelba has no friends nor connections here. Well, that's going to make it tougher. I have a lead. It's a musician. Works in a place called Pepito's. I stopped down in the lobby and got directions to get there. Oh, splendid. Oh, sit down, please, Mr. Mitchell. And I will be with you in just a moment. Thank you.
happened to where this Xavier is. You know him? No, he's probably some kind of a gypsy fiddle player. He's the one who's supposed to have spotted Gelber's daughter here in Barcelona. I see. Coffee, please. Same. He'll probably show up. How long have you known Gelber? Well, 20 years. Mm. You think his disappearance was on purpose, that he was about to... Sell our country out? Well, who can say? A year ago, I would not have believed it. And yet now, you are here to find the missing papers. I am here to find Gelba. If he is a traitor... Take it easy, Major. Now, tell me about Gelba. Well, we started in politics together years ago. We worked together for the benefit of our country. We were friends. I was best man at his wedding. And later, I was godfather to his daughter. And there was no question as to his loyalty? Absolutely not. And then, well, I suppose a year or two ago, I began to notice a change in him. What kind of a change? Well, it's difficult to put into words, but suddenly he began to be seeing much of people I did not know. I see. Well, at first, I thought I was imagining it. But then I began to wonder about Yelba. You mean there was nothing definite about his actions that would make you suspicious? That was it, exactly, Mitchell. There was nothing definite. Then came the secret conference. And his disappearance. That's my answer. Is there anything else you can tell me about Gelba? Well, at his disappearance, I was stunned. And then I realized that my doubts about him had been well founded. Too bad you didn't let somebody else in on your hunch. Well, I realize that now. What I intend to make up for it. If Gelba is a traitor, my country shall have his life in forfeit. I shall see to it myself. Look, Jack, are you a heckler or something? Put a little soft pedal on some of that yak yak. The name is May Jack. Sure, Jack. Ma, oh, May Jack. This could go on indefinitely. All he's trying to tell us is to shut up. Now, now, watch that boiling point. Have you got a musician around here named Xavier? You're looking at him, man. You're Xavier? Right, solid. Xavier Kraus. Xavier Kraus? Why did you ever pick up a combination like that? So here in Barcelona, they like the name Xavier. In Paris, I was known as Pierre Krauss. So what's with wanting to talk to little Xavier, huh? We understand that you spotted a girl here in Barcelona named Kitty Gelba. Kitty, yeah, but cool. But what? A doll, a dollsville, a dish. A dish? It's a square. That look means one thing, get playing or get lost. Dig you later, man. Xavier, where was it that you saw this Kitty Gelba? You know something I can't remember? Oh, now look. Well, that's how it goes. Everybody wants to talk to a musician. That's why I can't remember where it was with this Kitty. But right afterward, I spotted her picture in a paper from the States. That's how I know who she was. We are no further along now than we were before. She reminded me of Ella. Who's Ella? A canary. A canary? Tall redhead used to sing with the outfit in Paris. She doubled on bass, too. How can you compare Ketty to this Ella? Ketty is not tall and redhead, she is short and brown haired. Well, we're wasting our time. Are you sure you did see Ketty Gelba? It wasn't so much she looked like Ella. I don't know, maybe it was the way we met. Yeah, I. I met Ella when. I met Ella because my piano needed tuning. So the other day, my piano needs tuning again, you see? And I get wind of a piano tuner who lives in an old beat-up apartment house down on the corner of Pietro and Salinas. And I go... Hey, that's it. Just as I was going into the apartment house, she was coming out. Pietro and Salinas. Now we got something. I hit on something solid, huh? Yeah, you're in the groove, man. Real gone. So are we. Come on. Thanks, Jack.
apartment house is an old four-story job built around a courtyard, and Ajak and I decide to split up. He takes one side of the building, and I take the other. I work my way slowly to the top floor. I don't know how Majak is doing, but I'm batting nothing. It's my 18th door. I'm looking for a girl that's supposed to live here. A girl? Yes, yeah, she's short, brown-haired, and uh, pretty. Her name is Ketty Gelba. There's no girl living here. Does the name ring a bell? No. Do you know any girl that looks like the one I described? Uh, that's it. I do know a pretty brunette, but uh, she's my girlfriend. Her name is Rita. Maybe she changed her name. No, Rita has lived in Barcelona several years. I don't think she could be the girl you're looking for. Okay, thanks. So the boy in the top floor room has stepped right into his own trap. I hadn't told him the girl I was looking for had just come to Barcelona, so now I wait until he makes a move to spread the alarm to Gelba or his daughter. You were the guy that... Hey, wait a minute. You were in pretty much of a hurry just now. I saw the man who tried to kill you. Yeah? I know him. His name is Emir. It is Gelba's private secretary. He, too, is a traitor. Now, wait a minute. Let's not go off but that path. I'm telling you. This guy, Emil, is our only way to find Ketty and her father. You go on below in case he ducks out that way. I'll give the roof another look around. Go on. First nod from Lady Luck today. Hello, Ketty. Who are you? How did you know my name? A guess and a good one. You know, you've been a hard little lady to locate. Now we're going to have a talk. Who are you? My name's Steve Mitchell. Where's your father? As if I would tell you. Do what you will. You learn nothing from me. Will your father be back soon? He's not here. He will not be here. All right. We'll just wait and see. Well, you, you can't wait here. No. Please, leave me alone. I'm telling you the truth. Save it. All right. I am Kitty Gilp, but my father is not in Barcelona. He's... He left for Paris yesterday. You stayed behind to send postcards? Okay, go ahead. Try it. But you won't like that human fly routine. That's better. 
You and your father and Emil engineered this whole deal. Somebody offered your father a lot of dough. Emil arranged your getaway, and the three of you took off for parts unknown with the papers. Maybe I'll have more luck with the telephone. Answer it, Ketty. I said answer it. And don't try anything funny. I'll be standing right beside you. It's not my father. He's not in Barcelona. And there's no reason why you shouldn't answer it. Use your normal voice and hold the receiver away from your ear so I can hear too. Hello? Ketty? Uh, sorry, you have the wrong number. Mr. Gelber, don't hang up. Who is this? My name means nothing to you. The important thing is I'm with your daughter and she doesn't get out of my sight until I talk to you. No, Father, don't do it. Ketty, no harm must come to you. All right. Tell me where to meet you or else. He's bluffing. Don't depend on it. I... I... Make up your mind. No, no. Very well. I will be at the San Marcos Bridge. Ketty knows the place. Well, at least Emil got away from you. Right now, your father's more important to me than Emil. Come on. Hello, George. I thought I'd better bring you up to date on this deal. I found Ketty Gelba. Good work. How'd you do it? That Xavier turned out to be an American boogie-woogie artist. <laughs> After a long song and dance, he gave us the address of an apartment house where he said he'd seen Ketty. Is she with you now? No, she's in the temporary custody of my friends, the local police. After I finish this call, I'm going to meet her. We have a date with her father. What's that? Yeah, we're going to meet someplace called the San Marcos Bridge. Fine. But uh, just one thing, or uh, maybe you've already thought of it. <laughs> I have. It could be a trap. Well, if it is, I won't check with you later. Come on. Your father said you knew the place. Where is it? I'd forgotten. You're a real cooperative kid, aren't you? Well, we just keep walking until we find him. Kenny. Looks like he's saved us the trouble by finding us. No, father, no! Run, father, run, run! Who are you? He's one of them. What? Now, don't start that one of them routine again. Oh, Ketty, we are beaten. Oh, no. I'm so tired of running. All this I've done to protect you, and now they've captured you anyway. Protect her? What do you mean? You threatened to kill me. I threatened to... <laughs> Wait a minute. Mr. Gelber, you'd better take a look at these. A United States agent? What? That's a general idea. Now, what's all this business about protecting your daughter? Oh, what a relief. Well, now that my daughter is safe, I can tell you everything. As you know, I went to the United States relative to setting up air bases in my country. Yeah, then you took a powder. No. I was approached by interests who wished me to betray both our countries and to divulge secret information which had been discussed in the conference. Who approached you? I don't know. It was done by a written message. They warned that if I didn't do as they said, my daughter would be killed. I see. Well, my first thought was for her safety, right or wrong. An escape to Barcelona was arranged for us. Mm. But you took your papers with you from the conference. I had no choice. I knew I was being watched. I even had no opportunity to give them to anyone who could be trusted. To leave them in my room would have been insane. But you knew that what was in them was top secret. Oh, yes. That's why I kept the records in my own scramble hand. Scramble hand? <laughs> That's... That's my own form of uh, secret writing. <laughs> well, I'll be. So you've been one jump ahead of them all the way, huh? Well, we're still not out of the woods. What do you mean? Whoever tried for those papers will make another try. They know you've got them. Well, who could it be? Who arranged your trip to Barcelona? Emil? It was he who... Oh, no. It couldn't be Emil. Wait. By arranging the escape, 
And coming along, he would have a better chance to get the papers. Where are the papers now? In a briefcase, hidden behind a loose board in Emile's closet. Does Emil know? No, I felt I could trust no one. Let's go. Emile. It was he who betrayed us. Guess again, Kitty. Mitchell is right, Gilbert. Guess again. Majak! Yeah, Majak, my little playmate, who wanted to help me so much to find his old friend Gelba. Now I see why. I'm grateful to you for your help, Mitchell. You've been most cooperative. I thought you were associated with Majak until he caught me. He made me come with him until he followed you and Kitty here. So you were the one that dropped that tile on me. I'm glad I missed you then, and again at the window. You've been of great assistance, Mitchell. So what happens now? The obvious. You none of you are of any use to me now. And you, Gelba, have been kind enough to divulge the hiding place of the papers. Your turn next, Mitchell. No, Majak. Me first. Oh, no, Father, no. Are you all right? Sure. But, Majak, he knows where the papers are. I thought you said they were in secret writing. You don't understand. He developed it with me. He can read them as well as I can. You take care of Emil. <laughs> Commissioner, Majak is dead. The papers have been recovered intact. <laughs> Thanks, Commissioner. And Galba has been completely exonerated. Hey, would you mind moving over, Jack? I think you have the wrong party. My name is Galba. Yeah, sure, Jack. What's going on? Oh. <laughs> Well, you can't teach an old dog new tricks, but maybe you can make a cat out of him. So long, Jack. I mean, Commissioner. <laughs> 